Alrighty. Hello, my internet dudes. Hey, Howie, aka Brentley. You had an autistic moment? I honestly thought you just misspelled kitty. There was indeed a kitty on the screen. Uh, let's get our desktop showing. All right, so uh, I've been screwing around on my own time, trying to figure out the best way to make, uh, make destructible objects. And it seems like, it seems like I figured it out. Uh, but today what we're gonna do is get back to designing the beach. There's a beach somewhere over here. Here we go. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a beach from far away, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to deal with that. You're back in the inferior country, Team Worm? I'm sorry about it. As someone who lives in the inferior country, uh, you know, we both know. It, it sucks here. It could be worse, though. We could be in an even more inferior country. Uh, Brentley, what is playing? Ah, uh, like the song? You should be able to... Hold on, hold on. Nope. All right, well, there is a bot that's supposed to pay attention to what song is being played. Ah, right, I had to restart my computer and I didn't relaunch it. Hold on, hold on. It's in here somewhere. Okay, there he is. And then now... Now if we type song... There we go. Uh, this is the Song of Healing from Zelda. Oh, uh, no, what game am I am I playing or creating? Uh, I'm working on making a game that is like Pokemon, but with um, with like tactical combat. Uh, tactical combat is a, a common term that generally just means like um, your your positioning matters. It's not like a Pokemon battle where you just like smack each other. And it doesn't matter if you're standing close or far or behind things like in, in my game, you'll be able to like hide behind a tree uh, or like hide behind rocks and not be able to get hit by certain attacks. Um, you won't be able to use a, a close range attack unless you actually move close to the uh, opponent's Pokemon, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, right now I'm designing the map. We're trying to make like a little, uh, like a, like an island, a little, like a little rectangular kind of island. It's got a mountaintop up north. It's got beach all around it, uh, on all the other sides. So yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to take a while, but you know, little baby steps at a time. We'll get there. Um, okay, so when I was looking back at this, I'm kind of not satisfied with the shape of the beach. I want it to be more beach-like. Uh, and I don't really know what that means. I think less of a straight line. Just kind of got too, too straight of a line going on here. So, I feel like... I feel like maybe if we just move some things, we'll, we'll make like a... Just a, like a nice curve going on. Uh, and now I've never moved things. Well, not extensively. So I think, I think if we just go to the little mouse option, I think we can just like select a bunch of stuff. Uh, well now the problem is, okay, I want to select like this chunk. And then can I just bring it in? Oh, okay, we can, okay. Um, okay. So I think I'll do something like that, and then we're gonna we're gonna kind of like connect it. All right, and so then that's fine for now. Let's see how this works. I saved a backup before we started, so uh, if anything goes wrong, we'll be fine. Um, okay, and then what I want to do is select a water tile, and then use the paint bucket. And can we just fill? Oh, oh, it's like we were never there. All right, cool. Okay. Oh, now. Okay, that was interesting. Hmm, the paint bucket shows you a preview of what it's going to cover up. Cool. Holy shit, alright, that's, um, that's a lot of sand. Don't do that, my dude. Alright, so we want to kind of fix this spot. So how the hell do we do that? Um, I think the easiest way is we can go into terrains and we can find our sand and water.
Okay, that's... It's better than it was a moment ago. I still don't like it. Um... What does it need? Let's let's look at it from far away. I think maybe we want it to match this pattern. It's a little stair step. We're kind of limited by the Pokemon tile set. So we can't make it look like a nice curving beach. Um, let's see if we what what are the smallest steps we can do without having it look weird. Like one one by one does not work out. So what if we had like a two? If we extended, nope. Right, because one of them is itself an edge. Okay, so that still looks weird. So really three tiles is what we need for any kind of transition, at least. Okay. And then this is one, two, three, four. So we could make this one a little smaller. Nope, you gotta, you, you, you gotta go one more because you got the edge too. Okay. Maybe if we continue that pattern, it'll look all right. Okay, so that? Yeah, all right. Sure. Check it out from afar. Oh, Team Worm, I didn't get to ask you. Uh, how'd, how'd the trip go? You're back in the inferior country. Was Canada fun? Okay. Don't like this edge. We need to add some detail to this edge. It was so good. Sweet. I got a notification that you and Zillia streamed together. How did that go? I assume that was also fun. I was doing something. Can't remember what. Weekends are always busy for me. Hmm. Okay, I don't like you being straight. How do you look in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, you look too suspiciously straight. So does this area, but I feel like I need to look at all the different textures to decide what I want to do with this spot. Hmm. Oh my god, you did Minesweeper with one person clicking on the keyboard and one person clicking on the mouse. One person using the mouse. Okay, so one person moves the mouse, the other person does the click. Nice. You got an expert win both ways. Okay, like you swapped uh, roles. Fun. Oh, also 14 Minesweeper variants. I still need to check that out. I have watched like two different people play it that I've rated. And uh, I don't... I don't totally get what's going on with whatever specific variant of the 14 they were playing. Some of them looked hilariously complicated. Like math equations and shit. Oh, and then you did words on stream. I'm glad people enjoy that. But God, I just don't. Hmm, maybe we extend this. Okay, so... Hmm. Thinking about, like, how I would structure this map to be efficient. And I wonder how bad of an idea it would be to... If, if you had a layer that was just water over, over the, for the whole map. Because then... If I wanted to delete this beach, all I would have to do is delete it. But right now, I would have to delete it, and then I have a fucking hole. And then, uh, hold on, we want to be in tiles, we want to click water, then we want to fill it in. But if we had an extra layer underneath everything that was just the water, I could skip that step. I don't know if that's fucking worth it, though. Like, performance-wise, I think my PC would not be happy rendering an extra layer under everything. There's two expert games, Resilia's third and fourth best efficiency. That's pretty funny. Were you, I guess if, if you have two people to talk it through, 
you might be able to make more efficient plays than otherwise. Especially if you're if you're better at efficiency than them. No con okay, so you didn't communicate. Oh my god. Okay, that actually sounds I really funny. I need to go back and watch that. Hey Booski. How's it going, dude? Oh, I'm still in a race mode. Always, always forget to unclick a race. Okay. So we do something like that. And then like one more. Do we have room for one more? I feel like we don't. One, two, three. Yeah, that makes that look weird. I don't know. Maybe that's okay. It's so hard to make it look like an actual beach. It looks so like video game mappy. I think really to avoid that, I need a different tile set. Let's see, how do you look? Yeah, that looks okay. Got another little island down here. Also been trying to think about like what, what kind of puzzles would I want to put in a beach zone? Thinking like, like Genshin Impact just has a bunch of like fucking random, it's just puzzles to solve out in the world, which really makes no sense. You could only solve them once, and yet you, the player, get to solve every single one of them. Like, you mean to tell me no person has come along to solve puzzles? You get treasure. You get, like, swords and gold and shit. Like, and all you have to do is, like, smack a block until it matches this pattern and then smack this other block until it finishes the pattern. You telling me no single, no other adventurer would do that shit? Nobody? Not a one? I don't believe it. Uh, but anyway, they're fun puzzles. It's fun to just be able to walk around and just like, oh, hey, there's a puzzle. So uh, I think I want to do that. But then then I feel like I need, a, need some kind of rules for the puzzle. Like, like a puzzle on a beach. What would a puzzle on a beach should do? Would it utilize sand? Would it, would it be about, like, digging channels, since you can dig easily in sand, to, like, redirect water? I don't know. Thinking about that got me, uh, thinking about the fact that I want a destructible environment. And that is, uh, apparently kind of a pain in the butt. It means essentially making... Uh, if I don't want things destructible, they're really easy to draw with all these tile map tools. But if I want things to be destructible, I have to make them actual objects with a bunch of other um, information about them. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? I... Actually, I don't know, you look okay. You look okay. You gotta, gotta just focus on the things that I think look really weird. Things that look very blocky. There's a limit because of this tile set with what we can do. Okay, so I think I've kind of I kind of fixed one little spot that looked like too much of a straight line. This area still looks like too much of a straight line. So maybe we'll bring this in and then it'll, it'll kind of like curve out at the top. Like it'll, I'll have the sand go all the way up to here and then kind of just like follow me down and then back to here and we're, we're, we're done when it gets back to here. All right, let's try that. Shit. Okay, we go to tiles. We use the mouse. And then we're going to grab something like this oh it didn't do it now hold on grab all that I, I'm letting go of shift and click or shift and control before click no no it's still just not happy to do it what's your deal I don't shift and click you just don't shift and click right you shift and click when you're trying to draw areas um uh oh uh uh um 
Oh no. This kind of thing has happened to me in paint before. Uh, I've like broken the undo. Okay, wait, hold on. Okay. Oh, that's okay, because we still have the whole piece. It's not exactly what we want, though. So, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's let's fix this. Oh, my God. Having an unreliable undo-redo that sometimes accidentally permanently causes problems sometimes permanently does things that you can't undo or redo. Uh, I'll be honest, I kind of thought that was only a problem with paint, because paint is um, fucking... Paint's paint. It's like garbage. That's, that's rude. It's simple. It's fucking simple. Okay. Now we know how to do this. We're going to take... Ooh, do we take maybe this whole thing? No, let's take like this section. Hey, Bob Joe Pie. There are tile map layers if you want to make it easier, like a ground and a water layer. Yeah, that's that's essentially uh, I was just mentally talking, like walking myself through whether or not I should do that. I do have a bunch of layers set up just as um, ground objects. You're supposed to be right next to ground objects, too. You guys are supposed to be next to each other. Shit, did I not save that change? Anyway, I have a bunch of layers set up. And because I'm still new to this and kind of just experimenting, um, I was sort of out loud musing whether or not I should just make a new layer and just put water on that entire layer. And then the next layer is whatever the ground is. Sand, rock, dirt. Um, that, that would definitely save me time in certain situations. But it would also be... It, it's some nebulous amount of additional like computing. And so I don't really know if that's a good idea or not. Okay, do I want you back here and we'll just make everything connect? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. And do I like the way that's gonna look? Like this will kind of curve back to here. And then this will kind of just have curve up and out. Yeah, that should be okay. All right. It's really hard for me to just like fucking experiment with this I feel like i want to like think about it for hours and figure out like what is the exact right way to do this but there like is no fucking right way to do it i just need to do it there are probably better ways to do things that i will learn as i go okay we want to go to terrains and then i think i'm just gonna kind of get rid of that and then we want to extend this out, but we don't we don't want this situation. So mountains, did I draw you in the ground? I did. You're just part of the ground layer. That's that's not very smart of me. That's not what I would what I should have done. You should have been part of ground objects, at the very least. Crap. Okay. Okay. Um. So all that means is that if I tried to draw. And hide this watery edge underneath the mountain. I can't do that because the mountain is technically part of a layer. All right. Um, that is a good thing to make a note of. Need to know how to move uh, move tiles from one layer to another. I would imagine I could just copy paste. For now, I'll just let it look a little bit silly. Um, nope, we're not drawing a line. Um, ooh, actually, shoot. Okay, so we want it to come out to, like, here. I don't want the player to be able to walk around to here. So for now, we're just going to pretend this line is not like this. I can fix it in post. Um, and then we're just going to kind of... Okay, now you're matched. One, two, three... Now you'll look okay. Do another one. And let's go a little bit more than that. Something like that. Like that. Hmm. Hmm. 
it's not it's not pleasing me like I want a coastline to be pleasing. Like when you look at an aerial photo of a coastline, it just looks nice. The curves that nature draws are like sweet. My curves are not sweet. Hmm. What is it about them? Is it just that it's simply just the blocky nature of it, I think, is the problem. Okay, now how do I feel? Because we see the weak point of the texture map at these small changes. Hmm. Does it look better than the other way, though? I think maybe a little bit. Tried to do that, and we'll try to give you like a little tiny end. Hmm. Okay, and then this this might be something I can solve by um, when I replace this tile map. I need to make sure that it looks nice at the corners. I think it's specifically specifically this transition. The way that it loops back right here looks it looks okay in certain situations, but when you try to have this um this angle, it looks a bit like not only like segmented like it isn't a tile that feeds really nicely into the next one. Um the way that it loops back, I think, is is why it looks bad like that. And then it also kind of that looping back interrupts the the way the coastline looks. Mm, although I, I do like this a little bit better than it looked before. Better than the way it looked before. Oh, my God, I'm fucking sleepy. If I if I seem lower energy than usual. Because I'm fucking sleepy. Can have you come out like this? Do I like that? Yeah, why not? Okay. So this texture looks weird, but it's kind of growing on me. As a... Uh, it's better, slightly better than the alternative. All right. Okay, so I think I'm also going to make a note... Um, to restructure the ground layers. I think I am going to do that. I'm going to uh, add in. I'll add in a new layer. And then just to double check, I swear it's like really easy to move these around. Right? It's not physics layers. Is it navigation layers? No. There's a spot that just is. It's just layers. Just layers. Okay. And then I swear what I did before is I added in ground objects too, but I thought I clicked the arrow, which should move it all the way up. Now it's at the bottom of here. It's on the first page. Top of the second page, bottom of the first page. Makes sense. Okay, whoa, no, 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 no. We want you round objects. Okay, so now if I save, like you should be hanging out in the drop down menu right next to ground objects. See, I, I swear I changed that. All right. Uh, so I'm going to add in another one of these it's off stream, probably and uh essentially delete all the water and then add the water in uh as a lower layer that way it'll be easier to delete and move and manage things um okay what are we doing here we're going back into our sand situation and we just kind of wish it was easier to just draw with this like it sort of works you can it'll eventually figure out what you want but really, it's just so much easier to, like, draw actual shapes. Oh, that's kind of cool to have, like, a little tiny pool. Shoot, yeah, I did want, like, tide pool areas, which I kind of, kind of drew little inlets, but didn't, I didn't make little tiny pools. That's, that's probably an essential part to having a tide pool. Let's try to figure that out. Hmm, okay, drawing there kind of worked. Oh, do I like that, though? 
Okay, maybe like that, and then how about a little more up here? I have to come out. Hmm, do we just make you a straight shot? Hmm. So hard to decide these arbitrary things. Okay. So I think this looks better than it was before. Uh, obviously, ignore that little water line. We'll fix that. And then maybe we need some extra shapes for right here. Yeah, the long flat edges are kind of not my jam. <sighs> Maybe I'm just fighting the Pokemon look too much. Okay, so down here we have a bunch of tiny islands. And I like that look as well, but I definitely want to make little tide pools. Let's figure out how to do that. And maybe we'll do that like up here. Really? Hold on, you know what? Let's get some, let's get some science info. Or, uh, where do tide pools form? Rocky shorelines. Okay, that would that would make sense. A, a rocky shoreline, you're gonna have spots where the rocks are kind of creating barriers. Ooh, that looks cool. Bro still uses Firefox, dude. Firefox is like the thing. It's the better thing. Chrome is, like, creepy and wants to force you to watch ads, even if their dumb ads have malware. They're like, fuck you. Watch our ads. Let us track you. Who cares if you get malware? Fuck you. I do. Chrome. Also, when I search for shit on Amazon, I don't want, like... like if I search for a specific brand, I don't want Amazon to put, like, six things in front of me that are, like, buy these other things that are absolutely not what you're looking for but like they're also keyboards like fuck that fuck them fuck their sponsored bullshit firefox gets rid of that shit on mobile chrome doesn't because they fucking suck i'm the type of person that used yahoo Does, did yahoo have a good reputation they were like a, a search engine competitor but i never really thought of them as like the good guys you know Whoa, also. Firefox, what the hell? You're like not updating. Hold on, hold on. I gotta close Firefox. It's being a weirdo. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna click spin the wheel. Will you will you show the okay. Now it's fine. Okay, so let's let's go back to the window I was looking at in Firefox. That was not being displayed. Um so yeah, rocky coastlines. So then I think maybe we'll have tide pools on the other side of the uh of the beach which is going to be a rocky beach gmail on top that's proof firefox is poo well it's proof that i use gmail and that google docs is pretty sweet it's proof that they uh they do different things you're right today mission matrix you're a little uh a little antagonistic did did firefox hurt you you weren't even alive when I made my Gmail. Oh my god. See, where you're not that old. Either you're not that old or Mission Matrix isn't that young. I, I, I feel like odds are. I, I guess it's possible. But how long have I had my Gmail address? Probably like 20 years. You'll be turning 18 soon. Okay, alright. So then it's, it is certainly possible. I guess Mission Matrix, you are that young. All right. Oh, that's a sweet picture. It's it, it's boring for a tide pool, but it it's giving me ideas for the shapes of rocks that should be letting things in. That looks cool too. Hmm. Okay, so we'll put tide pools on the rocky beach, and we'll just have some little sandbars and inlets over here. All right. <laughs> he she might share your Gmail's birthday. I I doubt if you went down to the day that it would uh it would be the same, but that would be impressive. 
Um, okay, so we're okay with this little area. Hey, I'm holding shift and control. That means I want to draw a shape. Thank you. It's just kind of... Just like a little waviness. Does waviness look cool? No, we don't have enough room for that. Okay, maybe we'll just start start the outcropping sooner. Something like that. Mm, and then this looks a little, that's a little too extreme. Like that. Sure, why not? I really just need a canvas to start putting puzzles into and a, an environment to start putting objects into to get um, little Pokemon running around. Hey, Dirk Lover. Huello to you too. Right, this spot too. You're too you're too flat. You're too flat spot. We don't like flat shit here. Okay, what about man, maybe a little little more like does that look? It looks slightly more beachy. I would not describe it as looking beach like though. feel like a fucking AI image generator trying to figure out what things look like. Like, bro, what the fuck does a beach actually even look like, man? What if we gave this a little... Little edges. Eh, Alright. What about right here? Sure. Sure. Okay, so what other part of the coastline looks really bad? Let's see. This sandbar is a little bit too geometrically pleasing. Too geometrically simple. It's not pleasing because it's supposed to be a sandbar. Okay, and then yeah, we definitely, these areas are definitely like chunkier, blockier. Oh yeah, my little tiny islands. <laughs> Right, and then we finally come around the curve. Okay, so... Let's see, I think... I think I kind of want this part of the curve to come down a little more. Then we'll work our way back and uh, get rid of some of the blockiness. Ooh, actually, this whole this whole section looks a little bit weird. I guess let's extend it out. Maybe I need shallower pieces so it's not a, so abrupt. Yeah, the... Uh, my my initial goal was to use the um use the tile set from a Pokemon game. And the uh the the options for water and shallow water and beach shapes, sand shapes are uh are leaving me wanting. Um It's a little bit uh it's it, it's difficult because like i don't really know you know i don't i have no idea what i'm doing so like this is just a more of like do it create either accept the shortcomings or let them bother you so much that you redo them a kind of a situation because otherwise i would just sit thinking about making this game for uh for hours a day instead of actually doing it fail fast is your philosophy sure that's a good way to describe it i'm i'm afraid i may be failing very slowly but uh but yeah i'm i'm perfectly willing to have to do like a new draft of this whole thing and so the way i'm seeing it is just like try see what works see what doesn't mostly i want to get comfortable with like the workflow of godot Um, let's see if we kind of, let's see. So with a circle, <laughs> how does a circle work? You kind of start, you start with like longer sections. And then as you transition, those sections get shorter and shorter until you almost are at like a 45 degree angle. 
and then they become longer, but in the other direction. First, they're long uh, vertically. Then over here, they would be long horizontally. So uh, let's. We don't. We don't even need it to be like a good circle. Just, just kind of circular-ish. Um. So like with you. Shit. Where is it? That's like right here. Nope. Nope. Hold shift and control first. Draw it out a little further. And then maybe here we'll start cutting in a tiny bit. Seems like I need a tile map brush instead of dragging rectangles. Yeah, the uh, drawing with... Th I, I don't really know a better way to do this, but um, like setting this up as a terrain is really helpful. But when you go to actually draw with it, because it's designed to um, to like connect edges, it looks so strange at first until you like go back and fill everything in. And because that looks so fucking strange to me, I don't really know how to um, like how to use that effectively. Is there a way to get a larger brush size? Oh, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. I'm not familiar with Godot. And strangely, our only option is a pencil. There is no actual brush. There is, well, uh, the only free drawing option. that You can draw lines, you can draw shapes, you can do the bucket tool, uh, and then you have the, like, color picker or, like, tile picker, and then delete. Um, maybe... We'll see if there's an asset for it. Dang, that would be interesting. Um, maybe even just in like project settings. I need to get more comfortable coming into here. There's definitely valuable things in here. Okay. So I think of anything, it would be in general, not input map. Those are all like the keys you're entering. Localization, that's interesting. Auto load, shader globals, plugins. Okay. Oh, we can search for a setting. Okay, so that thing was just called, I think it was just called draw. No, it's called paint. Okay. Not new scene. Crap. Go away. Shoot. Go back to the world. I know, it's a big map. I'm sorry, Godot. Um, okay. Project settings. And let's look for the word paint. Hmm. Why would... 2D panning strength and audio come up. Although this sounds like a really cool uh, setting. Is this going to be like how audio falls away as you move away from a source of it? What? God damn it. I have too much of like a curiosity plus ADHD driven thought stream. A value of zero disables stereo panning entirely, leaving only volume attenuation in place. A value of one completely mutes one of the channels if the sound is located exactly to the left or right of the listener. Cool. Okay, so it, it's it's for how much of what of an audio source comes out of either of the speakers for stereo audio. Cool. Okay, that is irrelevant. I don't think we're going to find the paint thing we want. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, I'll survive. Um, okay, so we want to kind of become more and more abrupt in here. So you might be. Oh, my God. I don't have a terrain selected. The things that it does remember and the things that it doesn't remember, the like state you were working on, still something I'm really getting used to. Okay, so really we should go like one more down, something like that. Then we're just gonna do like a sets of two, I guess. Something like that. Hmm.
Now it's kind of supposed to be uneven because nature, but... Hmm. I don't, I don't like it. Let's see, would I like it more? I like it more if I made it actually like systematic. So like, like right here, we might go out again. And so now this matches. And then here we would go out again. Whoa, whoa. All right, my PC is not happy, happy running Godot with such a large fucking tile map. Okay, something like that looks, uh, eee. Let's redo that last part because we want it to be kind of a longer, longer situation anyway. So like something like that, nope, nope. We want it to be too wide to come out extra. Hmm. Eh, it looks all right. I think it looks better than it did before. Still not perfect. And then I guess the way we're going, this curve is going to kind of come up into here. So let's move this up. So we grab the mouse. We're just going to kind of drag you up. How much? Like to right there? Sure. Grab the mouse, grab a water tile, grab the paint bucket, fill her in. Okay. Oh, that, do I want to draw another... Let's see, maybe I want to clear this section out. Uh... Hmm. Can I just do that? Yeah, we can just draw water into there. Cool. Okay, great. And then we'll just we'll connect the lines nicely with our terrain. Okay, so we want to keep following this shape. So we're going to definitely have sand in here. Go down like a little tiny bit more. Mm, or should this be the end of our our little section that has this this amount of rise for run. Mm. Nah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. And then here we'll start going a little bit more horizontal. Yeah, it would be nice to have some more complex drawing tools with... Um, within Godot. Maybe there are. Done this on Reddit and you're not sure if it works. Use the select tool, square at the top, square at the top right icon, and select an area with the shape you want to clone. And control C, now your, work, your cursor works like a stamp. Yeah, I think that does work. And I guess the, the main question would be, does that screw up the, uh, the terrain system. I bet it won't. So let's let's find out. So let's try. So I think we can just like select this and then copy it and then paste it. And then yeah, now now we're kind of floating around with like a shadow version. And then we could like put it here and paste another one. Okay, yeah, actually I was aware of that being a function. I didn't think about using it like this. That's actually a really good idea. Cool. Um, okay, so I don't actually want to do that. Uh, Bob, thanks for the uh, thanks for the suggestion. I feel silly knowing that I knew about that tool already and just didn't think to use it that way. All right. How how bad does a long straight coastline look? Eh, a little bit silly. Honestly, the silly part really just seems like this little spot sticking out. It's like if I commit to it having very simple geometry, it can kind of look okay, which is what like what Pokemon games do. They just have like square beaches and 
make no apologies. They're just like, that's our fucking beach. Play our play our fucking game or don't, people. Um, let's make this like a cute little actual island. Hmm. That's kind of fun. I need more weird little shapes like that. I wonder if you can hold control or shift and then drag it so that it's like a brush. Oh, let's try that. That would be good to know. I, I don't know if they would go through that trouble to make it work that way, though. Oh my God, Dirk Lover, you're still working on the, the character sheet for your RP server? You submitted a meteorite addict raven as your companion. Whoa. What a what a specific addiction. Tele he can telekinetically manipulate small objects. Sweet. Okay, accelerating himself into the air seems um That seems normal for a bird. Make things lighter if he touches them. Cool. Bad thing is he's an addict to meteorite crystal that it makes its way to his brain. Yeah, that sounds bad. But Eld Elden Ring is full of all sorts of unhealthy situations, you know? Let's 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 try this out. Okay, so let's see what happens if we copied this section. And then we go to paste. Now we have it just kind of floating with us. Can we draw? No, you you can't click and drag and draw. You can you click and then when you unclick, it actually makes the change. That honestly, that makes sense. That would be very cool to be able to draw with it like a like a brush though, just to have the extra option. I would not be surprised if somebody made a plugin that did that. Um, all right, I want to kind of fix this sandbar. The sandbar is boring. And then this guy too. All right. It's so hard to make a coastline that I actually like. I guess honestly, maybe it'll like, once I put puzzles in it and treasure and you got like cute little crabbies running around, getting food, getting hunted by other Pokemon, like maybe it'll look, maybe it'll look better. It'll look more alive. Maybe, maybe I'm hyper fixating on the strange shape of the beach and most people just be like, that's a little weird. Oh, well. Hmm. Do I want this to come in more? Do I make this stick out just a little more? Maybe a little more right here. And VLC player has crashed on us. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while, VLC player. No, don't tell the developers. Whoop. That's not supposed to be over there. Apologies. You also think there might be an extension to improve the drawing? I, yeah, I bet. Although the only the only reason there might not be is that uh, Godot 4 is newer. And I don't know, like Godot 3 probably has all sorts of cool tools that Godot 4 is missing because it's so new. At this point, it might almost be a year old though. Let me see. March of 2023 for number four. So, so yeah, it's, it's about a year old. All right. I don't know how old something needs to be for you to expect it to have as many features as the previous thing. Uh, we could be there by now. I'll have to check. Um, do I want you more like this? I feel like I want this part of the sandbar to be chunkier. More like more meat up here. This little transition needed to change um, out a tiny bit more. Hmm. No, I don't like the unevenness of it. Um, that's a little bit more pleasing. And then just just a comparison. If we draw in all these weird little things, does that look? It looks weird. It just looks weird. All right. Maybe we shop around for new tile sets. I don't know. 
You think I should really look into procedural generation? Yeah, I, uh, I want to. And I think that's going to be one of the... Um, one of the final things that I add to the game. I want like a good mix of hand hand done things. Um, but then I want to try to figure out procedural generation for um, for spaces in between. So you might have like a town that I made deliberately, a coastline that I made deliberately, but sections of the coastline and sections of the areas in between. I'll let the game know like, OK, this much area is going to be sandy beach put put some randomly generated stuff in it um but i since i don't know anything about it i have no idea how complicated that's gonna be but um i think at the very least if i don't incorporate it into the main like world maps um thinking about a game like pokemon the whole game is deliberately uh designed map wise but then if if there was some end game that had some cool like procedurally generated islands you could go visit or something and they would they would change you could just like keep going to different randomly generated islands like that sounds fucking cool and maybe um uh, maybe i would let the players see like the seed that generated it so if they found a cool island with a uh, I don't know, cool aspects to it. Some kind of cool randomized treasure or um, I, I kind of want to have like po Pokemon with different skin colors, different um, sprite colorings spawning on, on randomized islands. So somebody might be like, oh, dude, I found like a blue Charizard. Look, take this seed, go to the island. There's a blue Charizard. Get yourself a blue Charizard. Something like that could be cool. Uh... Maybe you look okay. No, no, let's chunk you out a little bit more. Oh, I will, I will, I will get good at drawing with you. Okay, did I need to come out one? That was it. Okay, okay. So we want that. And then we want the next one to kind of be like that as well. Like right, right there. Mm. Mm, okay, so you're actually off. You need to come up one more. Okay. Okay. And then we'll kind of have you... Do, do we do the... No. You know what? It's fine. It's fine the way he is. That, that little curve is good. We're fine. Who cares? It doesn't need to be perfect. We just need a fucking framework to put our fucking puzzles and environments into. Actually, yeah, you know what, with that, with that kind of mindset, I should probably just, I should probably be okay with this section of the coast. And then, hmm, not there. That we're going to fix. That we're going to fix tonight. Um, I need to start thinking about what kind of objects to place in the beach. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I need to write this down, make a note. Grab my Google Drive. Do, 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 do. Where are you at? Um, okay. Let's bring up the scribe to-do list. Okay, so... Firefox. All right. So for environment specifically, I need to think about... Um, What objects should there be? And like, what do we need objects for? Uh, one for set dressing, just like we want to make a beach look like a beach, right? Ooh, shells. Yeah, definitely shells. I, I think I think we'll get some ideas going through um, the tile sets that are available. There's got to be some kind of shell thing for a Pokemon game, right? Like on the overworld? Maybe not. I don't know. <clears throat> it is surprising having played so many Pokemon games and then actually going to like make a map. Uh, being like, like it's so clear how ignorant I am about what actually is in Pokemon games from a map perspective, uh, including whether or not they have uh, they have like shells 
Okay, so we want to make a beach look like a beach. So like shells, uh, like driftwood, seaweed, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we also want... We want objects for puzzles. I'm not really sure what that's going to look like right now. Um... I need to think about like, like what would an ocean slash beach god, like what would they value? And then maybe the puzzles are like related to things that they would have placed into the world. Maybe like little shrines or something, like they're gonna test your skills, but it would be things they care about. Ooh, water interaction objects. So because, because the general idea is like, uh, there's limited interaction with people, but we, we definitely want some kind of boat. There will be a dock area. I think a lot of the boats will be abandoned. Um, buoys is an interesting idea, like near near a dock, definitely. There would definitely be uh, buoys. Um, so then, yeah, let's let me let me continue the. Uh, set dressing notes I guess we'll just keep going boats buoys um nope nope that's not what I want I have to hit enter first and then tab yeah okay um the other thing the other objects will be like creatures maybe creatures and NPCs um, like there will be both hostile and not hostile creatures and, uh, humans. Well, oh, a light, a lighthouse is going a little bit past objects, right? Like a lighthouse is like, like a building. Like I would have to probably map the inside of it or, um, or like, I don't know, draw the, make sure that there's like a a broken entrance to it or something. I was thinking smaller scale. Um, but if it buildings is a good thing to know. What's good buildings? Oh my god, Bidlings. Buildings? Lighthouse? Um, and yeah, definitely trees and bushes. Um, there are some very clearly, like, tropical trees included in, uh, one of the packs. Um, and then the the other thing that I specifically need to f focus on, like clearly I need to figure out the puzzle situation. Whoa, I just opened a new tab. Don't do that. I just wanted to bolt. That's all I was after. Um, puzzles definitely need to figure out some thematic things. Like I, I could just do some run of the mill Pokemon puzzles, but that's not what I want to do. I got to figure out like uh, some kind of thematic reasoning to uh, to make some sweet beach puzzles. Um, I think seaweed, seaweed's already listed. We got seaweed. Um, then the, the, the final thing, you know, what? I'm going to put puzzles plus, plus treasure because obviously we, we want there to be loot. Um, the final thing is that I need to like, like consider objects for simulation purposes. And what I mean by that is like, like the creatures get hungry, they need like they need things to eat. They need a place to nest, um, because I want that to be like a visible aspect while you're playing the game. I want you to be able to like watch these animals do things, um, and maybe like maybe they're skittish and they'll avoid you unless you can kind of like trap them in the right spot. So then like you need to pay attention to when they go to those kinds of spots. Like maybe they head down to the water to eat to eat food and you need to wait until they go to like a rocky spot so you can like trap them in a corner so they won't run. They'll actually initiate combat and then then uh, you get a chance to battle them and then like capture them. Um, and then N NPCs, I guess uh, we want to we want to note they're both uh, hostile and friendly. And that goes for um, for creatures, too. There will be a lot of creatures that just like like they just don't give a fuck about you. They're not afraid of you. They don't want to fight you. 
if you fight them, if you attack them, they might run from you or they might be like, fuck you, bro. Let's let's fucking go. I'll kick your ass. Um, but then there will be other other creatures that like 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 I feel like if a Charizard saw you, he, he would be like your lunch or get the fuck out of my territory. Motherfucker. I'm a big scary dragon. Um, whereas something like a I don't know, like a like a big water buffalo Pokemon might just be like. I'm huge. What do you want from me? I'm not afraid of you. Let's hang out. I'm going to eat some grass. I don't care about you. Uh, and then same thing with NPCs. There will be people who are just like, I'm just out fishing. And then there will also be people who are like, oh, it's fucking battle, dude. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing I want to keep in mind is having, having everything for uh, simulation purposes. So like places for creatures to eat, places for them to nest, whatever. You hear everyone has a water buffalo? Damn, I don't have a water buffalo. I must be a loser. I would love a water buffalo. Actually, maybe I wouldn't. They probably eat a lot. Right? Um. So anyway. Um, oh, and you know what? The other... The other thing to think about... Hold on um is what should the terrain be like um so beaches are mostly open areas um and then rocky beaches might be less open um so i think generally those are going to be like the design philosophies i go through as i'm trying to fill out all of this space with stuff to do um, a lot of it will just be like area dedicated to animals and then puzzles sprinkled in here and there. Um, and because of, because I want the, uh, the overworld map to also be the like combat map, um, I need to make sure that even though it might not be realistic for a beach to have, um, like lots of obstacles. Uh, I, th I think I need at least like a few trees, some boulders, like things to rocks, things to hide behind. Um, I want to be careful to not have areas that are just wide open uh, because then, then any kind of combat spells or abilities that are like long range are just like, like brokenly good. And I would like to, uh, I would like to avoid that. Although to an extent, I think it makes sense that um, whatever animals you go to catch, they are optimized to function in their environment. Um, so like, like if you ran into a crabby in a rocky beach, he might have more close range attacks um, compared to a crabby that you run into in an open beach, he would have more like long range attacks because that's what he needs to hunt out here and also to like fight off idiots like you who come come knocking thinking that he should join your party. Maybe he doesn't want to join your party. You got to fucking you got to prove you're worth it. Prove you're worth, test your might. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Hmm. They have a home ground advantage. Yeah, exactly. And I I want I want the game to be intuitive in a way that like um if you as the player are trying to overcome a challenge, like maybe you're trying to beat a gym leader, I want it to not just be like, "Oh, I'm fighting Brock, I should bring a bunch of water types." I want it to be like, "I'm fighting Brock and his gym challenge, he makes me fight him in a like a rocky area with all sorts of like twisting narrow areas. So like long range attacks are not that useful. Um, maybe like medium range attacks are good. Um, and close range attacks are also good. So I should go out and find a water Pokemon in that kind of environment because it will be, it will already be kind of optimized for that. Um, and then of course you would also have the ability to like to train them 
and to teach them new moves like regular Pokemon. And then in that case, you could still overcome. I don't know. Maybe you have a Krabby you caught out in an open area and he's got lots of long range attacks, but you could train up, uh, train him up in some, some close range attack uh, types. Teach him how to do like a some kind of like, I don't know, like crab hammer is probably a close range attack. I need to like evaluate all of the different like Pokemon attacks, come up with my own names for them. Also give them like range um, since normal Pokemon doesn't, the attacks don't have range. Which is uh, a kind of disappointing. And I know, I know, like, yes, uh, fucking, oh my god, what's that game? Pokemon Conquest exists, but it did not scratch my itch for a Pokemon game that brings tactics into the combat system. Because you, uh, all the Pokemon in that game only have one attack. It's not like Pokemon where you have to, like, raise a, raise a team and, uh, teach your Pokemon different abilities and they level up and they learn new abilities, like... They just evolve, and their their one attack changes to a different attack. And they're, like their strategy there, it was fun. The smash attack is that is that what you conceptualize Crabhammer as? I think that's pretty close to how I conceptualize it. It sounds like it'd be a cool attack. I don't think I've ever actually used it, though. Okay, so... So here's the thing. If we start, if we cut into this beach, I've got to decide where the rocky beach starts. Oh, I was down here drawing stuff. Maybe that was where I started, and then I was like, no, I should draw, like, the general shape of the whole thing. Um, so I think maybe we go like right of the middle. We started as we start like semi rocky. And then once we get over to the curve over here, we do like full on rocky beach. And I think that area will be kind of small because uh, it's going to be a lot of extra work. I should have environmental dithering, maybe. Do you mean like when you, when you transition from one environment to the next, you're going to have like kind of a, a mix of both environments? Yeah, I, d I definitely want to do that. Um, and we're going to we're going to do it not only from one beach section to the next, but then up here is going to be a mix of like like grassland over here on the right side of the a little little kind of island thing we're making and then over here like a very rocky area um and then maybe in between we'll have like uh maybe like kind of like a muddy like it'll go from like grass to grassy mud to muddy rock to rock okay, actually i'm gonna write that down that is the sensible thing so it's gonna go grass to grassy mud to muddy rock to rock I don't think we'll have an area that's just like all mud. It's kind of boring. I don't know. Maybe we could make it cool. I love, I love Quagsire, and I always feel like Quagsire would be hanging out in like a, a weird murky swamp thing. Not a swamp, muddy, like mud mud flats. Not swampy. That's different. That's different. I'm describing a gradient well it's like with uh, like I, I guess so but but it i don't want it to just be a nice transition right like it should be like like as you get closer to the grass area like you have a few little a few little random patches of grass and mostly beach and then then maybe some more beach then then okay mostly uh Mostly grass with a little bit of sand. Um, yeah, it's going to be difficult to figure out that transition, I think. Hold on. Let's look around at the tiles again. Because I think we have... Um, yeah, we have things like this, which are like... They're like a grassy plant. 
but they have a transparent background. Um, I think those things will be like perfect for handling the uh, the transition from sand to grass. We can have some of these just growing straight out of sand. And then uh, terrain wise, I believe we have right, right. We ha we only have sand that's surrounded by grass and I will have to make one that is grass surrounded by sand, which is what I will need if I don't want to pull some weird fucking shenanigans. Um, okay, yeah, right. Here's the sand and grass one. Well, let's just make sure it is. Yeah, it is just, it's meant to be used in a grass area. Oh, I wish, I wish Godot had a cool way to just invert that. That would, that would be quite complicated though, because it would essentially need to switch the, um, what terrain is in what spot and like it doesn't know what grass looks like if grass is in the middle of a thing i would i would have to tell it that anyway let's uh let's keep drawing our coastline and then should probably right i decided when i hit this that's where we're gonna have the transition into rocky maybe a little sooner maybe like right here all right so let's let's just finish we'll just make this area very simple I think this this side of the island will just be like a long meandering coast. Whoops. Um. So honestly, we could come like all the way over to here. Oh no! Oh no! I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong thing. Not drawing sand and water. Okay. All right. So let's go down just like a tiny bit. All right, these little individual changes are growing on me. As long as they're not too close, they look okay at a distance. Hmm, will this get, bridge the gap nicely? No. Okay, we'll make this one not as long. We need to fit one more in. Yeah, that looks okay. Still one too many tiles transition right here, but that's fine. Actually, sure, we'll just make that part of a changing pattern. It'll just kind of come out a little bit. Ah. Um, ooh, I should draw from over here. Then I can control the size really well. Cool. And then now maybe we just go back to our long meandering coastline. Go in here. Oop, didn't go, didn't go deep enough. Hmm, should we come out again? Sure. Now we'll go back in. Ah, uh, no, let's go. Uh-oh, mm. uh-oh, I'm drawing a line. I think because the tile map is so large that I'm drawing right now, Godot is a little bit slow, so I can't just hit Control and Shift and start drawing my square. I have to hit Control and Shift and pause for not even that long, just a fraction of a second, but it is pretty funny. Okay, let's like, we'll kind of lengthen this out. It's interesting how varied all the things you do are in game development. This is like so time consuming, but also just like fucking chill. Okay, so let's let's kind of gradualize this spot and then then we'll look around and see what kind of um what options we have for a rocky beach. Hmm. Okay, 
how far do we have to go? We want to match to here. Ooh, it's seven. Okay. Well, six, six steps. Yeah, we got the space. Something like that. That looks okay. From a distance, it looks all right. I think up close, it's going to kind of look a little funny. Okay. Don't know what my plan was do to do with you. I think we're just going to delete you. And then we're going to look into... Uh, what the hell we need to do? No. Oh, right. I just I just draw over you. No, I need to I need to have the right tool. Click a spot. Get the right tool. Draw over it. Great. Okay. Uh, after this, we'll figure out what we're gonna do with the, the rocky beach situation. All right. That was a lazy a lazy fix, but good enough. It'll be pretty obvious when I come back. This is where I need to continue working on the coastline. Um, so so we have a few different like water rock transitions, which, uh, you know, what? let's, let's go all the way up here and we'll do some sandy rock experiments. Okay. So what does this guy look like? Just just like what it says it's water and rock okay and this is like a brownish rock let's see so mm, it would be really nice to make this three-sided so that i could kind of have like a watery inlet Hmm. Okay. And then we're also going to need to figure out the, um, the appropriate ground type to use for these. Like we'll have sand, but then we clearly need to make the rest of the rock that this would be on top of, or that this would, I guess that this is the edge of this edge is leading to some kind of rocky surface. Um, uh, let me hunt around for that. I'm pretty sure it's in EG tiles three. It's in one, two, or three. Uh, there's one of them that is just a bunch of different hills. Oh, sort sources. Oh shit, sort by name. Oh my God. I was looking for an, the ability to sort this. I dragged each thing in one by one. And despite doing it in order, it put tile two, tiles two at the top and a bunch of other things were in order, but tiles too was out of order. Oh my God. Okay. How did I not see that? It, it even looks like a little sort symbol. Oof. All right. I'll just, just pretend I'm okay with myself missing that. Um, okay. So these are all the different, uh, rock situations. Ooh, this guy's cool looking. I think a lot of them. use the same exact texture just slightly recolored um actually i guess the smart thing to do would be first check tiles one which is i believe where we got these yeah that is where we got these is there a nice rock surface out here up here no no there is not that seems like such a strange uh, lack of foresight, but they, they developed it. So they're probably like, oh, that just goes with this rock structure that I've already made. And I put it over here. So like makes sense for them. Just not for me from the outside looking in. Okay. So let's see you like, do you, how do you, how do you fit? You, you're not the right one. 
also, you're definitely not the right one because you have a little edge. It would be you. You're the one that's at the heart. If this whole area was just a bunch of rock. You don't look terrible, but you don't quite look like you fit. The, uh, the little details of the wall, little dark patches, look strange. Okay. Now, what if... We did something like right at one we would have to go to a higher layer and then look at it all yeah it still looks strange to have the darker details of this edge not acknowledged by the next tile set or the next tile piece okay ah i have misread it they are transparent okay okay so let's go back even further and hmm okay let's draw this on ground two hold on i'm not even gonna bother going in to the uh the terrain hold on i just want to draw like you we just had this little thing okay cool so actually there aren't like dark details it's that it was transparent and i was seeing through to the bottom because i destroyed the lower layer to place those things Okay, so that's actually really nice. So that means we could, uh, we could just place it on some of that dirt rock situation. Let's just do some experimenting here. We're gonna choose you. We wanna draw a shape. Let's draw you. Um. Let's see, let's let's draw some over the water so we can kind of experiment with that. Then we want this guy. Let's see what the gray stone looks like. I feel like we probably want to mix, but I feel like gray will look the best with uh like the sand and the water. Oh my god, Dirk Lover, Inclusion. That's cute. Aquatic symbiont with a shadow aspect to them. Sure, because of the ink, like they're like they're deceptive, they hide. You can create an ink cloud that may even take their shape to confuse predators. That's fun. Widely used by scribes and bookkeepers and fabric make fabric makers as their inks are opaque and lasting. The last aspect is also a big problem while bonding to a wild inclusion. That's cute. Because he would, like, ink you. That's a cool idea. I like that. When we when we get around to actually creating, like, 150-plus creatures. Uh, let's, let's remember that one. As long as you don't mind, I use it. I would assume you don't, Dirk Lover, but, you know. I'm not just gonna go blindly taking people's ideas without permission. All right, we're going to paste that without formatting. I I know how to paste in Google Docs, Google Docs. I just couldn't hit control V because I wanted to paste it without formatting. But it, but it says, okay, all right. That's very interesting. Use it, please. Sure. I, that's a, that's a great idea. We need to come up with, um, the, the problem I, I have been having is like, I, I, I have a note app on my phone where I write down ideas and I keep coming up with a cool a cute idea for um, like a, a, a creature collection game, a Pokemon, a fake mon uh, but then coming up with evolutions for them, taking the idea and then extending it uh, into different forms can be really hard you'll restrict yourself from bombarding me with new ideas, well you could just you could just keep a list of them you can just like open a Google Doc and and then then when it's actually time when we're uh, when we're making a bunch of creatures, then uh, you know feel free to bombard me at that point. And you might come up with an idea that's like a B plus or a C, but then later you realize a better twist on it that turns it into an A. So for that reason, I think it's worth writing down. Okay, so 
So what it, what is our plan here? Now we need to go a layer higher. I guess this is just an experiment. So we're going to go to ground objects, even though it's not technically a ground object. Okay. So that totally looks like it fits and that's fine. But what about, what about on this? It, it doesn't look like it fits, but it looks better than I thought it would. Um, I think somewhere we have water and rock that has like a gray. Yeah, we do. Um, right. We also have shallow water and rock. I need to, I need to get on that. I think we're going to change the, uh, change the beach situation to have some shallow water for walking around, especially over on the other side with little islands and things. I want there to be little like shallow spots you can walk across. Um, so if we just do that. Mm, this is a darker gray. Like, it clearly works better than the brown. But it doesn't, it doesn't work perfectly. Okay. And then I also wanted to look at... Let's see, we're here, so we might as well just use the brown one. Um, okay, so how... How would we go about doing this if we wanted, like, a kind of, like, inlet? First of all, we wouldn't... I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> okay, like we don't... Shoot, do I do I want that section? Mm. No, because we want this to be an inlet. So we're going to try deleting all of this. Oh, it's going to redraw it. Okay, terrain, that like that is very smart of you, but that's not what I'm after right now. Okay. Okay, no, that's fine. That means we just erase the whole thing. And we're just going to go out here and uh, draw in what we actually want, which is essentially just this. Did we want it to? Yeah, yeah. Essentially just this little tiny. We want like a tiny rocky inlet and we want to transition from that to Sandy Beach. Is that like, is that even an option? Should I, should I just make this whole coastline rock? Like we could do that. Right, like we would, uh, it would just look, nope, nope, that's wrong. Hold on. So we would have these up here. And then we would need a little corner piece. It would be like you. Be something like that. <sighs> that does look okay with the sand, but I still want a transition. I want to go from, uh, sandy sandy coastline to rocky coastline um will will a corner achieve that like okay hold on what because what we would do is we would go even higher oh no we want it to be oh so it's almost like what i would need is a version of this piece that I just drew and a version of this piece, but like without water. I need them to not have water and to just be transparent where the water is. So then it would look like the other side of a rock that's sitting on the beach. Okay. That might just exist somewhere else. Boom. Mm. This is, um, I think maybe, maybe good evidence that this is the, the wrong order to go in when you're trying to create a game. Don't just use a tile set from somewhere else. Ooh, we did find a little log though. There's just too many fucking things that like, I don't know where they are. Too much fucking shit. Um, okay. So what, what would happen? Dang it. I thought for sure we would have corners here that weren't in water. I need hills that have a little corner that's not in water. Hmm. Use and add your own based on the set you have. Yeah, I, I honestly think I need to do that. I've kind of already decided I need to do that for, um, the transition from gra from sand to grass. If I want um, 
if I want to draw sand that is surrounded by grass, the game, the, the tile set I have has my back. If I want to do the opposite, it doesn't. So I think I need to make that. And yeah, I might need to make, it would just take a second really to, um, to essentially take this corner piece and just erase away all the water from it. The, the thing that bugs me is that very well may already exist in here. And so certainly getting to know the tile set better by searching around is not a bad idea. It is just a little bit annoying because like, like, holy shit, bro, there's so many tiles. And it kind of looks like, um, it looks like they don't do the corner tile that I need for a lot of things. Like, like if you have a, if you have three by three, you can draw certain shapes. Um, you can't draw, your shapes need to be a certain amount of thickness because you don't have the right corners. Um, you don't have outer corners, you only have inner corners. But then these, this two by two is, these are the outer corners. Um, so I just, I need the two by two for those damn rocks. You can catalog it, catalog it once, like have a smaller tile sheet. Yeah, I, I already did kind of, like this was one giant tile sheet that I, I very quickly broke into six different tile sheets. Um, and it's so much, it's like it's so many little things. It is actually quite difficult to like, like mentally catalog it in my head. Um, and yeah, it would probably be smart for the final design to, um, to grab only the tiles that I actually need from it. But you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'll need yet. I definitely know at some point I'll need mailboxes. It's great to have access to a bunch of mailboxes, but, uh, but yeah, that comes at the cost of having a lot of extra assets that I may never use. Hmm. That is very interesting that they only do the two by two corners or, um, or the water based rocks and not, not the other rocks. Well, oh, I guess it's specifically, uh, these go into the ground, whereas these are hills coming out of the ground and they may share some aspects to them, but they're not exactly the same visually. Hmm. So then that's probably why I won't find exactly what I want because of how they've done this. Oh my God. It is a new redeem. It didn't. Dude. So I updated Sammy, which is the bot I use for these. And uh, before when it didn't work, it would it would definitely be my fault. Like I would forget to confirm that everything worked right. Every like 30 days you have to re-sign back into Twitch. Um, but now, now it's uh, with the newest update, it keeps disconnecting from Twitch halfway through. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna just redeem Good to, luck. there we go so you said you have an aqua finding it well ah, kind of but only because you've been using it any anybody would have encountered the problem is the thing it uh it's so annoying because there's like nothing I can do about it I shouldn't have updated I didn't I didn't need any of the new functionality. You think Dirk Lover just breaks things? Or you think I just break things? Either way, you're probably right. Humans are destructive. <sighs> okay, so I think visually... Visually, we're limited with what we want to do here. You do, you're a gremlin. Oh my god. Man, I try not to be, but I fucking am. Every morning I like, I make the cats food 
while uh, Crazy Pants makes us breakfast. And I, since I'm making the cat's food, I have to like wash all their dishes. I like soak their dishes from the night before so that they're all like ready to go because their dried food is like hard to clean off when it's dry. But if you soak it overnight, it's very easy. So I wash all their dishes. And then I like I try to dry them off, but like I just I don't they're still wet and I just leave water all over the counter. Sometimes I remember to clean it up, sometimes I don't. She'll go to set something down and just be like, uh, there's water all over the counter. And I'm like, yep, that's my fault. That is 100 percent me. And who wants to be putting pots and pans into potentially not clean water? It is clean water, but you don't know that. So, what do we do? No, that's that. First of all, that's the wrong kind of water. Hmm. Just trying to figure out, like, how would you make this look not dumb? Like, yeah, I think we just need a new tile. Hello. <laughs> You just joined and I'm griping about you. I'm sorry, Crazy Pants. I was not griping about you. Hopefully chat is willing to confirm that I was I I was lamenting being a gremlin. Like Dirk Lover. Some hoodlums are yelling things outside. Alright. We I I need to make a note. I need to make a new tile. Uh what would I even call it? Make a rock. Rock, water, sand, tile. I'm just, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this spot so I know what I need to do. Uh, which does unfortunately mean that we can't do the transition, but we can kind of do the like rocky beach area potentially. Learning about the pre-wash compartment or whatever it's called, and a lot of dishwashers changed your life. Yeah, we have that, but uh, our dishwasher is not amazing. There, there are certain kinds of cat food it cannot get off of a fork to save its life. Whether we use the the uh, the pre-wash compartment or not, which we always do. Why not rock and waterline? Well. It's, I want to. I want both, though. You know, like I want this section up here to be very rocky, and the rocks can be uh, the transition to the water line. But I, I also want a spot where it's like a mix in both, a mix of both. Ugh. My God, the tea I gave you about crazy pants earlier. Yikes. Uh huh. I seldom say bad things about crazy pants. She's great. Um, okay, but I do need to fix my freaking mess here. Can I just like undo, I just undo all of it and then redraw the thing. Great. Okay, so I'm going to redraw and actually this is a bad place to draw it. Let's, let's illustrate the problem where I want to transition to a only semi rocky beach. So like right, right here, we're going to draw the problem. Shoot. Okay, like that, and then, then it's like we would come around, and then we have no, we have nothing. We want, we want that to work out. A nice little each time. Well, actually, now hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, it's still the same thing. I still just have to delete. I need a version of this without the the water, if I want to use it for this. Okay. Great. Sometimes your brain plays tricks on you. I think you have a solution and you don't. My God, this is a lot of coastline. All right. So yeah, up here, I do want to do a very rocky section of the beach. And I guess since the mountain is already brown, we go with brown rather than... Um, rather than the other option, which was like that gray rock. Um, so then we're essentially gonna be, first of all, we need to go back down to ground level. 
Probably ground two. Hmm. No, because I've already been drawing things on ground. What we're going to do after stream, I'm going to add a like ground zero. I'll change this to ground one. I'll add a ground zero and ground zero will just be a canvas of water spread underneath everything. Um, okay, so then we're just gonna we're just gonna go in here and what do we what do we actually need? We can go into terrain. Hmm. But terrain isn't gonna get us what we want, I don't think. Let me let me see. If we just draw a line, how do you handle that? <laughs> the erasers on? Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, the the terrain is going to handle this in a way that I don't want. It's trying to make this the right edge rather than the left edge. Now, I did I did want to do a, an experiment that I forgot about, but I want to try it now that I'm thinking about it. Um, for the different kinds of of these little like dirt like berms, these little like hills. They, I will want to draw them the way that I just wanted to draw this edge up here. Um, where essentially I just want to like draw one edge and have it not be the inside edge of something. I want it to just be the outside edge. And I, I want to see, actually dang, this shape is complicated. Ah, uh, but maybe it would still work. Okay, so I want to see if I can turn this into terrain. And if I give it this shape, if it can if it can work out. Uh, so before we do that, let's save. And so to do that, we would go to tile set. And we're going to go to pattern. No, it's not patterns. You go into paint over here. And then we tell it that we want to make a terrain. And then we find the weird shaped thing. Um, yeah, we'll go with this brown. I feel like this brown looks looks all right. Okay, so right now we have to choose a terrain set. Um, shoot, what was... Oh, terrain set one is for the newer tiles. Terrain set zero is old stuff I was working on. Okay, so we're going to do terrain set one. And we need to make a new terrain. Okay, okay, I know how to do that. It's over here somewhere. Uh, so it's not a layer. Should just be a terrain set. Okay. Mm. Okay. Every terrain within a terrain set, you have to choose how they match up, how it, it constructs the shapes. I don't know if maybe we need a different mode of shape construction. So then let's just add in a completely new kind of uh, shoot uh, terrain. Do I get to name you? Pretty sure, because one of you is called terrain set one. Okay, this is just called terrain set two now. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fine with me. I don't see where I would change its name, so whatever. Um, okay, so we're going to keep match corner and sides for now we want to add an element and we're going to call this uh i don't even know like i need to differentiate because these aren't the ones you jump down i am going to need to do the same thing with the ones that you can jump down but i believe these are supposed to be similar in visual they're supposed to give you the same visual information as the ones that you can jump over but you can never jump over them they're just like a little steep hill that your character is unwilling to uh, to climb down. Um, so maybe like call it like steep berm. Hey, let me tell. Oh, 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 lord, oh lord, that's laggy. Wow. E E P. Holy, uh oh. All right, uh, maybe it's a bad idea to make a tile map this big. Wall hills? Hmm. So the problem with using hill is I already have hill as that different kind of, the thing that's at the top up here. Um, I think I might just call it a berm. That is what I think of them as for some reason. 
Not like a full hill. Combine wall and hill. Call it a wall or a hill. Oh my god. Now nah, I don't think that works. So something's telling me that doesn't work out right. Um, okay, I'm just going to call it a steep berm. All right, so what I'm going to try is... Oh my god, it's so not happy. It, it like, cannot handle... Dang. I wonder what the problem is. I think it is just the fact that I have such a large tile map. Um, that the game is having, or the, the engine is having trouble processing this enormous thing. So... Maybe I need to look into optimization. Like, it'd be nice if while I was in here, if I could just deload this and tell it like, hey, don't just don't worry about this right now. I'm I'm doing some stuff in here. I'll tell you when to worry about this again. Um, that's another another thing to look up. All right. Walls. No, no, no. We're fine. We get, it's a steep berm. We got it. Oh my god, this is this is fucking brutal. Okay, no, but I need I need that middle part to be highlighted. Oh, I don't have a terrain set chosen. I am so sorry, Godot. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh it's terrain set too. And then it's a steep berm. Crap. I was in a different terrain set when I labeled it. That's fine. We're gonna just overwrite that. Hey GRT. How's it going, dude? Now you'll let me add you? Okay, great. God. Uh, this poor project file. It's so unoptimized. Okay. So now we've included each of them, but we need to tell them where they're supposed to be connected so so each of these needs to appear when its buddy is next to it now I don't know if this bit of information is enough but we're going to try drawing it at this point once I give it all these side pieces because usually what you do is you'd fill in these little inner squares for all of them because you'd also have an inner square. And so like filling in these squares on this side lets it know, <clears throat> okay, if I draw this tile, then to the right of it, I need whatever tile would be here. But we don't have a tile there because it's just an open thing. Um... Okay, I, f I feel like this isn't going to work, but I need to learn how terrains work because it might work. Oh my god, right. When you add a new terrain set, it doesn't immediately appear. It is so annoying. I have to like open it and then leave and then open it again. And usually that works. It has not worked. Let's let's just click around some other things. All right, tile set, are we cool? Like, could you could you update over in the tile map? God damn it! This could end up being worse because um, because of how big the tile map is now. It is not happy. Hmm. This reminds you of Mario Maker. Have I heard about Team 0%? No. I saw a Reddit post about there being like one level left that hadn't been completed. Are they like trying to complete those levels? Server shut down on April 9th. Yep. 
They're trying to make sure no Mario Maker level goes unclear. Okay, so then yeah, that I assume that is why somebody made a gaming post on Reddit about there being a level that hadn't been cleared yet. Um, from my memory, they made the the title made it sound like it's literally one level left, and because there's part of me that's a snarky child, uh, that part of me was like, well, somebody has to clear it to upload it. They don't let you upload a level unless you clear it, so it's been cleared by the person who made it. You know it's below 18, but not sure where it is exactly. Some were hacked? to Like, so they didn't have to clear it before they uploaded it? Like, they just cheated? Terrains. Why are you fucking with me? Why are you fucking with me? You're part you're part of the tile set. You're in here. You're fucking in here, dude. You should be you should be in here. Hmm. Okay. Maybe the mistake was not pressing save over here, but it's supposed to save the whole scene. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe reload Godot. So that is that was my uh, my go to plan before, and I did it like three or four times, and then I was like, "This is dumb. I th this sh I should not need to do this." And so I tried just clicking around a few times, in and out of the tile map, and then it finally worked. But you know what? Maybe we do just need to reload Godot. Because that has worked for me before as well. There's a good video about the last 50 or so levels that you watched. Hmm. Is it by a, a cool YouTuber? Or just by some random person? Honestly, either way. I, what I would care about is the, the quality of the presentation. Um, Alright, let's pop Firefox up. I'm going to close Godot. And then I'll reopen it. It's a random member of Team Zero Percent. Okay. All right. You, uh, if you have the link, link it in chat. I would like to see the kinds of levels that are uh, that are giving them trouble. I feel like they would all just be garbage, like horribly difficult. <laughs> Not garbage. That's rude. But like, just like fucking crazy rude nonsense like the whole level is spikes and except where you start and then you got to just bounce off a thing over and over and over again while navigating through spikes and then oh you got to hit this shell and pick it up just right and throw it in just this direction otherwise too bad you're dead get good scrub oh hey our terrain maps in so yeah i think dirk lover it is the the giant ass map is causing us problems uh, a lot of it was consistency stuff like 38 consecutive frame perfect inputs um yeah you i mean you know like maybe not every level deserves to be uh to be completed you know okay so okay actually now hold on this might actually work Damn it! Well, if I could, if I could draw correctly on the tile, on in line. Oh, and I can actually control the direction the berm goes by the side that I click on. Okay. Okay, so it does work like I want. It's a little bit difficult to draw with, but it absolutely works like I want. Okay, that's very cool. That uh, I'll have to do that with the ones you can jump over as well. That's really fucking nice. Um, now, the other thing to think about is that that's not all the pieces. We can't. Let's see. What are we missing? We're missing like. We have this corner. I guess we need an end, right? We need an end that's not just a weird corner. Shit. 
Okay, let's go. Let's go look at what else is available in the tile itself. Uh, shoot, was it number one? Yeah. Okay. Who's this brown one? So these are the edges. Hold on. Let's let's do some drawing. Okay. So let's say we had this out here. Ah, uh, nope. Let's draw it above ground two. I don't want you to gray anything out. <sighs> oh my god, the actually nerd meme. Did I say actually that badly? Hopefully I didn't. Okay. So these guys are the edges that don't wrap around. And then what are you? You're just, you're the same thing, but for vertical. Oh, that doesn't look good, though. I, I guess it, it looks, it looks all right. Huh. Yeah, it kind of... The, uh, there's a dark line on the lowest piece. No, it's, 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 it's in the, it's the middle piece. It has a dark line. It looks fine over here. When it transitions from here to here to the corner, it looks fine because the corner has some darkness near the top of it. But then over here, this, this transition does not look as good. Am I misreading it? Is it not meant to be used that way? Let me try the other side. It's like the idea would be it would you want to tell the terrain system, like, just keep repeating these until we get to an edge. And if that edge is just an edge, then boom, you do that guy. Oh, that looks fine. Hmm. Why do you look fine? I guess it, it's it's the same thing, just mirrored. I, I'm being I'm being a dumb human, I'm being too particular. Okay. Um. So what we want to try and figure out is how to tell the terrain system that uh. Oh my god. To draw one one piece when you come across an actual edge and then a different piece when you have a corner and you want to continue on. And it would be nope, wrong side. And that's that's the wrong corner, buddy. There we go. So Oh shit, also there is no left corner for this wall. I guess that actually, yeah, that makes sense because the way that this is represented visually is you're trying to separate two different heights of ground. And if you had this corner turned the other way, you would have this weird situation where you're trying to say that here, let's let me like actually draw it and then we'll talk about how and why it looks terrible. Uh, he's still on the eraser, buddy. So like something like this. Whoa, whoa, Godot. I did not mean to do that. Something like this would be weird because you're trying to say that this area is differentiated from this area by being uh, like this area is supposed to be above higher than this area. But then the way that this wall looks, it looks like this area would be lower than this area. But these two areas are connected, so they have to be the same. OK, so I get why they wouldn't have that in there. The, the shape is just never used that way. And it would be very difficult to use it that way without it being confusing looking. You think I just have to not make a small vertical line with it? Yeah, yeah. That 
But the... <gasps> I think the... the Ideally, it would be able to make a this small of a, a line, a two-tile vertical line. Um, but yeah, we have to be careful with how the how the corners and edges specifically work. Um, but yeah, so what, what I want to try to do is see if I can can I tell the terrain this information, like. Can I let you know that these should be part of it and then, then what? There's got to be a way to do this. Two tile looks like it should either look significantly steeper on the edges or not as high. Yeah, it does. Um, it does look wrong. It's it's interesting how many things about the perspective of Pokemon games are like just just not sensible, and yet it still kind of works. Like your brain can still read the map. Um, but yeah, it absolutely looks it looks very strange. Um. It almost looks like you would need extra, um, some extra kind of ground tile to like, to make it look like ramp, a ramp. Because like the, uh, like if I draw it real quick. Like if you have a situation, shoot, nope. Hold on. Undo that, please. So if you have a situation like this, it almost, it seems like you, what you would want is a little, a tile right here that looks like a ramp. Because the idea is like the top of the, of this area is above the lower area. And that's what these walls are saying, the berms. But then they weirdly just connect without any obvious like incline. Like the, the sprite should be warped a little bit. So it looks like you're going up, but they just like don't. Sometimes they have stairs there, and the stairs hide it really nicely. The stairs look like they're rising in um, in elevation because they're stairs. But they regularly just have dirt or sand or rock like that, where they're, it's just like, oh, well, like you just fucking your brain can read it, right? Uh, to, to just deal with it. it. It is very weird. And that would be... Uh, that would be one thing I would like to change. I feel like essentially my goal with this is to like finally at some point hammer out like a um, a critical path and stuff like that is like you can do that at the end. Like your game can be in like early release beta and you can you can go back and draw some nice transition tiles and fix that. And 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 one percent of people are going to care maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's more than that. Okay, so time time to experiment here. So what we want to do, we don't have a terrain set chosen. We want to try to figure out how to bring these in. Nope, that's the wrong thing to click. Let's just don't don't have that. Undo that. Oh my god. Yeah, I need to figure out how to optimize this. I'm going to specifically, like, that's the first thing I'm going to check is how to stop it from running like garbage. I bet there's a way that I can just not have the, the tile map loaded. And if it means taking a moment to load in the tile map when we need to use it, that's totally fine. Okay, so... So very specifically... From what I have been told, each of these tiles is made up of nine tiles. We highlight the middle one to tell Godot, you're part of the terrain. You're part of the strange terrain thing I want to draw. But then we highlight each of these surrounding ones to kind of tell it like, hey, this is how you connect. So like, since this is the left edge, 
and we only want it to connect to something to the right, we would we would click this guy. And then it will know, okay, I need to connect it to something. And that's going to that's going to be something that has a dot on its left. So it should know to connect it to this thing. And it should know to only connect it to this thing when I don't try to draw anything to the left of it. It should know like, okay, the the left edge of this thing now has to be this tile. I I think. And so then we need to change this because this isn't a, a top. It is specifically a top corner. And same with this one. It is a top left corner. This one's top right. Let's, uh, let's get the other two done. If this fucking works, it, like, it will be so goddamn cool. There have been so many things like this in Godot that, like, at first seem confusing, but then when you actually figure out how they work, it's like, oh, like, of course, you have to question. work that way. Got a question. Have I been drinking water? No. Actually, I just drank the rest of my tea, and I need to go get water, but I'm being lazy. And this berry tea, it, like, makes my mouth dry. Sorry for the mouth noises. I'm going to go get some water. Ruckus over. Don't make me ban you, Dirk Lover. I'm just kidding. If it's just good natured fooling around, no bans. Only bans for dick stuff. Like rude things, not. But but also also bans for, for dick stuff. Like if you if you posted a dick pic, that would be that would be a ban. But also if you are being a dick, that would be a ban. All right. Jesus, look. Well, I don't know. I like, sometimes you say a thing and it sounds weird. And then further explaining the thing, it, it, you you get weirder before it makes more sense. The only way out is through. Or something. Um, okay, so now, unfortunately, we have that annoying problem where it's not going to update. Hmm. <laughs> uh... Dirk Lover makes a good point. Although, I don't know, maybe, maybe Jesus was a dick and he just had a really good, um, he had a really good PR. He had good PR people. They, they hid, they hid the parts where he was an asshole. Who knows? We weren't there. <sighs> okay. You know what? This might be worth a very quick Google. Uh... Let's say Godot terrain not updating, because that's the problem. Um. Okay. Nope. There. This is about connection issues. Okay. Like he's drawing the terrain and it's not connecting properly. Ah. Hmm. Ooh. 
hold on. They offer a button to hard refresh the entire map. Oh no, that's somebody talking about a different program that has a similar problem and how they've solved it. Fuck. Uh, uh. Okay. All right. That's lame. It sucks because there's something that I have done in the past that has let it update, but it does seem like it's less and less willing to do that with the, uh, oh, I think we have it now. Oh my God. You'd for sure ban Jesus. Like, like Jesus, Jesus, like walked on water, Jesus. He might have just been a nice guy, crazy pants. And you would just ban him? I don't think he would ever have a Twitch account. I think he'd be like, that's that's not for me. Um, okay, let's let's try this out. We should probably do it with lines. Oh my god. Oh my it just works exactly like you want it to work. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my I like I feel like emotional right now that this actually works right. Like like they made such a good tool. I'm sure they weren't the first people to make the tool. All oh, right, this is the thing I said we can't we specifically can't do. Holy shit though. Cool. Okay. Wow. Where's the anime wow? Dude, okay. Um so that's very nice. Uh, and now that lets me know that I can do that. I can do that for the rock walls, which was kind of, oh, the whole point of doing this is I need to do another one. Okay. All right. I got tingly about some funny placed pixels all, all the time, all the time. Uh, okay, so we don't we just we don't even need this here. Oh my god, it's so cool that this fucking works though. And in an intuitive way, in a way that like like I watched a few different videos about making terrains, and a lot of people just showed me what to do, but they didn't explain why. And one person explained what the fucking dots meant and how you're telling it where to put each of the tiles. And then that understand I, I'm not like that almost understanding that like vague piece of information led me to being able to make a different kind of tile map like that's so fucking cool oh that's fucking cool okay but now something that's not cool shit is a tile can only be part of one terrain at a time and that really sucks because what I want to do now is I wanted to take this water wall situation and I wanted to make it make a new terrain out of it to work like this terrain so I can draw it along the edge, but it's already part of a different terrain. So I have to either make another copy or avoid drawing it or just avoid making it a terrain. Oh, shit. It just works, yeah. In in some really cool ways. Fuck, <laughs> she really sucks. Oh, my God. Dirty Lover, you, like, remind me of, like, kids whose parents, like, won't let them curse. So they just, they just get adjacent words to curse with. My... My parents mostly weren't like that, but my mom really did not like me saying fucking. Um, I learned I learned fuck at the age of five and I did not believe it was a curse word for some weird reason. Like in my head, like, oh, man, the F word sounds serious. Like it couldn't possibly be fuck. Fuck just sounds stupid. That's a dumb thing. Um, so I would say it 
not believing it was actually the curse word. And then my mom got mad at me a bunch for saying that. So then I started saying freaking, but then she would still get mad at me if I said freaking because she knew it was like a substitute for fuck. <laughs> and I remember being so confused, like, but I'm, I'm not saying the bad word. Like I'm saying freaking. Uh, damn teamworm, you still don't swear around your parents? I, I don't do anything around my parents because both of them fucking suck and I now don't talk to either of them. Uh, but as an adult, I feel like I would be willing to curse around them. But also, like, my dad curses. I, I feel like if both of my parents were, like, very, like, sweet and neither of them ever, like, cursed, then I, I would feel like, okay, like, they just don't like vulgar language. So you thought swearing referred to promising for several years. Oh, yeah, that, that could be weird. That could be weird. You sorry about it? Oh, no, it's it's all, you know, like it sucks. Uh, it, do, it does fucking suck. I do wonder what my life would be like if I had cool parents that weren't like actual pieces of shit. Um, just, just to be clear. So my mom was like physically abusive. So like she fucking sucks and I haven't talked to her for a long time. But like my dad was just kind of like a manipulative asshole and he actually stopped talking to me. He asked me to commit tax fraud for him and I told him no. And he was just like, I fucking hate you. You're a piece of shit. I'm never going to talk to you again. You fucking suck. Um, so so like that one wasn't even by choice. Like I just kind of dealt with him being a manipulative piece of shit. But then he overstepped and I was like, look, dude, I'm not going to fucking lie to you for your taxes. Uh, and holy shit, he just fucking lost his shit. Um, and won't, he doesn't talk to me anymore. So it's just like, okay, like, oh, well. And that has actually been wonderful because he would just call me and complain about shit in his life that he had the power to solve, but would not solve. Um, or he would call me for help with his computer. Uh, but, but now he doesn't do either of those things. And both of those things were very annoying to real, to deal with. And yeah, crazy pants. You're right. We both do uh, curse a lot around your parents. They're cool though. They can handle it. I, your mom doesn't never curse, but she does seldom curse. So, you know, I feel like, you know, she's she's all right with it. I don't really know about Fred. Oh, my God. That's his name. Let's just your dad, your stepdad. No last names. That's fine. Anyway, uh, he curses occasionally. So, yeah, they both curse occasionally. It's fine. Everything's fine. They don't care. Okay, well, that was a lovely distraction from a problem I don't want to actually figure out how to solve. Uh, so then I either have to add in a new tile set or I just draw without terrain. Fuck, I don't know which one of those to do. They both sound like a giant pain in the ass. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is a sign that I'm not mentally healthy right now because I'm refusing to deal with reality on reality's terms. I just have to decide. Do I, do I make a new terrain? Do I draw it not in, as a terrain? Let's, let's just go with drawing it not as a terrain. That seems not that bad. We're not going to draw super complicated shapes. Uh, and then if I hate that, We'll change it. Okay. So what we want to do is, uh, do we want to be on ground two or ground? I think for now ground. Ooh, maybe we do want to be on ground two. Okay. Let, let's think about this. Cause, so, cause essentially what we're, what we're thinking of doing is we are going to have like a rock wall and Ooh, do we want it to be a shallow rock wall? Because then we could have like a little shallow water zone. And uh, we do. Damn it, I found it somewhere. We have a transition from shallow water to deep water. It's just the edges of these. It's just the edge, bro. Okay, so. Now I'm remembering why we want it on ground two. 
for an additional reason that I was thinking about, which is not relevant, but also because we don't want to destroy the sand. It needs to have sand next to it. Okay. So you do have to be on ground too. We just draw a line. No, you can't hold control to draw a line in here. That's a little bit annoying. Okay, so we would have something like that. Nope. Wrong one. You want shallow water. Right, you're holding control to draw it as a line, but you don't need to do that because you're in line mode, bro. Okay, so... Then we would have our transition into deeper water. Oh, uh, okay, okay. First of all, it's the wrong side. And then second of all, you gotta remember Godot's a little slow right now. Chugga chugga. A little bit o-knowing. I am a lot bit o-knowing. <laughs> I actually uh, think that is one of the things I enjoy the most is like tinkering with systems I don't understand yet, but when the penalty for failure is, is low, which is I think why I love video games. Video games just let me fuck around and screw things up and they're like, ah, you just start over. Like, that's it. It's not that bad. And then eventually you get it right and getting it right feels good, which is I think another important part of video games um that's there, there isn't that same level of visceral satisfaction here but it's still pretty good okay so so how would we have to handle this we we could we could view this as we're being forced to deal with a limited toolkit now how Right, we have the outer corners. Right. Okay. So we can have a situation like this. And we could even... We could even, like, go in further if we wanted to. Oh my god, I double-clicked. With it being laggy, it's so much easier to accidentally double-click. Oh my god, I just dragged for three spaces by accident. Oh boy. Ah, it's the sole purpose of games to practice in a controlled environment historic yeah sure sure yeah like the historical value of games maybe ooh yeah actually what was the first fucking game like just like games there are a lot of old games that just kind of represent something and aren't like a direct practice like um like war games is clearly like the military directly practicing for war but something like um like samurai used to play like tabletop or sport i was thinking tabletop but honestly sport it, really either one like samurai play go or they they used to play go historically and it was like a good tool for their mind, but Go is like an abstract game about capturing territory. And that didn't, that it wasn't a game about being a samurai. The game of Ur, oh my God, I watched Tom Scott play that. Ur was relatively interesting, a little bit luck based in one spot. I think near the end, there's like a choke point where you just get fucked over. I don't even remember what Ur was about though. It's like a race. But beyond that, I don't remember conceptually what it is. And Ur was actually the first game, or the maybe the oldest game that they found, right? Because I feel like a lot of old games are just conceptual representations of something. Not necessarily uh, strictly for practicing in a controlled environment. But that is, that is definitely a... Uh, Well, okay, how, shit, how do I say this? They're not for practicing the real thing. They are for some kind of practice or recreation of something in a fake environment. And so then the, the penalties are low. And sometimes, like a war game, they are specifically for recreating the exact thing and letting you fail at that exact thing, but in a controlled environment. Dice may be even more old uh, as a concept. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
But anyway, even if it w whatever the original purpose of games were, they are, they're fucking fun. How, how do I handle this? Oh, we can't. And honestly, we shouldn't do that because then the player like couldn't walk in that little spot. It's not a full tile. We would need at least a full tile of open area. Whoa. Oh my God. Godot. You got, you gotta, you gotta fucking chill out, man. Um, okay. So hold on, hold on. This would need to be a different corner piece. It would just need to be this corner. And then we do have these little tiny corners to do that. Okay. Okay. And I, I have these set up as terrain. So this stuff I can, I'll be able to like whip out quickly. But I'm just trying to like conceptually decide how I want to design this area. Um, okay, so then if we came in a ways, oh my God, Godot, I'm, I'm so sorry I've overloaded you. You're clearly punishing me because I'm mistreating you. I don't know how you work. Okay, so we might have like a big a big shallow area in here. Sure. Oh, well, yeah, sure, that works. But that also works fine. I didn't mean to select multiple things, but that's what we're going with. And then in here, we can just do a shape. Whoop. And right, then we would need the transition to deep water somewhere which is just this. Did we did we select it? We did select it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess I wouldn't mind making the whole beach like this. Um but then if I want the player to be able to come down here, I need to figure out transitions. So clearly transitioning at a corner was a no-go. We couldn't do that. Like that was like absolutely not I need to draw a new tile, which I probably should. And I think I will. I don't don't really want to do that now. That seems like a I don't know. Watch a watch a podcast and maybe eat a weed cookie and draw the stupid tiles I need to draw. Um, and let's figure out if we need one here. So we essentially want to transition from shallow water past the rock into the beach. So for now, we could, we could just do this and it would look stupid, but people would get it. They would, they would understand what I meant. Oh shit, right, we need the shallow water. We need the, the sand meets shallow water situation, which I don't think is actually in this tile set. Maybe it is and it's in a different spot. I, uh, I swear, shoot, I swear I went searching and I did find it. This is shallower water? No, this is the same. Well, hold on, let's... What are you interesting? Okay, so it is the same one. Oh, just surrounded by. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. It is lighter and then it's surrounded by the darker water. Also, why are you not snapping tiles anymore? It's not a full 16 by 6. What is what is happening? No, it's just the dark the dark edge that is the same. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Brain. You you got to get with it, buddy. Okay. So the reason it looks like it's not drawing the full thing is because the top of this is a dark edge that does match this water. Huh, so then is the purpose of this to be shallow water? 
Huh. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, we didn't find the, the sand around it, which is the thing we actually need. We got sand meets mud. We got shallower, wavy water meets deeper, wavy water. Which, yeah, I guess, honestly, that might actually look better up here. So, ooh. Yeah, like, the, the transition to, to deep water does not look good. And I think that's because... This is never meant, this shallow water is never meant to transition to deep water. It's not what it was designed to do. It's just part of this tool set for making pools or like lower areas that are filled with water that are surrounded by rock. And the shallow ones are not meant to transition to, the shallow water tiles are not meant to transition to deeper water tiles. Okay. Then what what is the border for this? Are you just sand? No, you're not sand. Oh my god. You think you understand something and you just fucking don't. Alright. Alright. I'll have to look at those more closely. Uh, let's look around see if we have a nice shallow to deep water transition. If not, I imagine that's something that I can just find. Uh, this huge sprite pack is just from a thing called Pokemon Gaia, which is a um, like based on Gen 4 tile sets. Hmm, so it's definitely not you. We already looked at 1, 2, and 3, and that's where, like, all the good stuff is. 1, 2, and 3 has all of the main terrain types. Okay. That's another thing to worry about. Uh, find tile set. Uh, uh, transitions from shell. To deep water. All right. Damn, yeah, that's annoying. Okay. So we don't have that. But we can still kind of try to figure this out. Um, so what, I, what I need to do... Is I just want to see if... Oh, shoot, it would be you? I just want to draw one of you... Okay, so I think here, same thing, if I want to, if, yeah, like no matter what, if I want to transition from, from these uh, little water to rock wall tiles, and then I want to transition to sand, I'm going to have to get my own tile that just doesn't have the water part of this. We just need to get rid of the water so it can be transparent. That's like the only option. That's so interesting. Are they just not? Is there nowhere in Pokemon where that transition happens? That's so crazy. Huh. What a weird fucking thing. Okay. Um, is there any way I could avoid doing that? Like, I want the player... I want the player to be able to come down to these lower areas. And I want to put, like, tide pools and shit in these lower areas. What... What would I do then? It's like we would... Could we separate the transition? Um... Uh, 
Mm. Yeah, like what would we do? It's like if you just have if you just have a wall, then it looks great. But how the fuck do you get down here? I guess you could always. Hmm. I was going to say we could always just have a spot where. Uh, where the beach would connect, but you, you still always run into that problem. There's always a spot where you need to end the wall. And there's no nice way to end this wall because it's meant to be, um, it's meant to, to like connect. It's meant to be a shape, a polygon with all sides bounding, whatever is inside of it. It's not meant to just be this kind of a situation. That's so fucking weird to me. That is such a strange design constraint. Especially when you to not have that design constraint, like you make like 0.01% more tiles than you've already made. And it's and it would be made up of a tile you've already made. You just delete some water off of it. Oh. Okay. Well, fuck fucking fuck me then. Then I guess we absolutely have to do the thing that I want to, uh, that I want to avoid, but I think we have to make some tiles. Fine. No matter what. I was thinking there would be a way we could avoid this, but it wouldn't look that good. But Hmm. Okay, here's a weird question. What about stairs? I think I think I still want to do the thing that I want to do, which is draw a new version of the corner tiles, but without water, so they can be used for internal corners that are transitioning off of the water. But what about what about some stairs? Are there sideways staircases in Pokemon? <laughs> what a fucking question. I feel like there are. I feel like there are. Hmm. There's all these interesting little like ruin staircases. What do uh what do you look like? I just like plonk. Hmm. Okay, so we would only need like one layer. Yeah, that would still be a problem because you would need, um... Oh, actually, what if we just drew it on top? Hold on. Okay, I mean, it doesn't look great, but it looks... Okay. Also, what about... I know this ladder is only used for transitions up in dungeons, but, like, what if you... Hold on, what if you just drew a one... A little tiny ladder. Okay, it's it doesn't convey the the ideas clearly. A better contrasting like outline for it would be nice on um, with this dark rock. If if this rock was gray, it would look fine. That's an interesting idea. Or like like this. Would that look okay with just a single? Hey, no, I need you to be on top. Sorry, that was my mistake. My mistake. I'm the dummy. Hmm. It's a little bit silly. But uh that would work in a pinch. Okay. Uh so we want to go back to no, I still do want to be on ground objects too. Uh wait. No, this is the one to be on. Okay, so we're still just looking for some kind of ladder. Situ not a ladder. Stairs. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Do not think I'm going to fucking play Timetsi today. Hmm. Man, all sorts of interesting little, like, ruin stairs. Ooh, I like these the most so far. Got good stone character. Hmm. 
All right. Stairs. Okay. Hey. Okay, so we would take like this whole thing and then. I mean, it works. They look so steep. Why do they look so steep? They don't look steep in Pokemon games. Why do they look so steep to me right now? I feel like I'm so much more willing to just accept the um the shortcomings of the world when I'm when I'm in it and I'm playing and I'm just like I let's I gotta go get an, another badge. Where do I go? I can go this way? Okay, cool. Where are the trainers? It's like I'm so so much less critical of the the world design. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I'm literally like trying to create a world right now, so I guess it makes sense to fixate on it, but not helpful. I need to uh, gotta stay in that mindset of good enough is good enough. Great can come later. Hmm. Especially if like, you know, maybe I could get a few people to do pixel art for me. And it would be, it's much easier when you understand the scope of like, okay, I need 2,000 tiles made. Here's all the tiles in my game. Could you redraw them? And maybe add a few for these purposes. That is much easier than just a nebulous, like, I don't know, help me work on my game? You can, we could profit share. Hmm. Okay, so like this, the stairs is a good, sh it's a good shortcut. A little bit lame, because we want it to kind of look um, natural, like a, 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 a rocky cliff face, a rocky beach area um, that isn't necessarily like hospitable and nice with OSHA approved pathways around it. What is your deal, Sprite? Like some kind of like banner? Interesting. Oh, yeah. May maybe. Bro, I don't fucking know. That's some weird shit. Cool assets, though. Hmm. Yeah, is there anything else we could use? Like essentially a ramp. A sandy, rocky, crumbled ramp would be so nice. Damn. Ooh, this is like a nice rock. Hold on. Bonk. That look like a Snorlax? What are you supposed to be, rock? You look like you're shaped like something. Cool. Also, I feel like we would want to put those somewhere where we're not walking because doing the collision for this, having the player be able to sensibly walk behind this, it looks like a pain in the ass of a shape. Oh, a bunch of like ruined pillars. Oh, I'm going to need you soon. I'll be back. Oh, shit. I'll be back. Oh, damn. All right. Pretty confident we're not going to find anything that we want. That's fine, though. We're just going to have to design a tile. All right. And you know what? I have to pee. I will be right back.
We're back. Okay, so what what do we've got like 14 minutes left? What do I want to figure out? I think figuring out the other things that I might need would be a good idea. So the plan is Rocky Beach up here. Um, let's take away the stairs. So I don't know, let's look let's look at some rocky beaches to figure out what, what we need. I know we need a transition from shallow water to deep water that looks much better than this. Um and then we also need the uh the corner tiles for these guys. The uh the little internal ones. We need versions without water. But I don't know. What the what the hell else do rocky beaches look like? Okay, so obviously just rocks sitting in the sand. I know we have a bunch of options for that. There are all kinds of weird shaped rocks we can use. Um, What about like weird geometry? Like, like stra strange shapes you only see on rocky coastlines. Hexagonal rocks. That would be kind of cool. There are, like I said, there all are there are all kinds of rock shapes in the. Uh, in the tile set, in the tile set, in the tile. Oh, those. Uh, I think I I know. The thing you're talking about. Yeah. Columnar basalt. I knew it was some kind of like uh mineral. They're um Oh my god, what's what's that game? The Witness. There's a section of The Witness, like a mountain in the middle that kind of connects to the beach. Um that has this shit. They're so fucking weird. So cool though. I don't know if there is a um, like I think there's a of a, a one off like a little rock that's meant to just sit by itself that has kind of a cool shape like this, but I don't know if we have like a pattern of them. Hexagonal stone. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, these look cool. They just look so fake. Right, the Giant's Causeway. I have heard that place named before. God, it's so cool looking. Oh, dude. It would be so fun to work on a on a game with a team of artists to be able to like to have them be excited to figure out how to make this in a like a top down 2D game. Oh, it's so cool. Damn. Okay, back to rocky beaches. If we find something like this, I would, I would totally be down to use it. Um, so it kind of looks like with rocky beaches, you have a lot of this just like there's big rocks kind of scattered around. I like that idea. That's cool. Um, it also seems like you have much, you have much more of like a much wider array of options for the shape of the coast because rocks can withstand erosion. Uh, and then the, you can just essentially make any shape with the idea being that like, okay, there were rocks here and they stayed and the sand and other dirt and silt got washed away. 11 rocky beaches in California. That'll blow your mind. Why 11? Why not 10? Hmm. Oh shit. Didn't mean to actually jump into this rocky main beaches. Hello, hello, Leslie. Oh no, Leslie, we were we were on the right foot, but now we're not. Don't do that to me. I am gonna scroll through your pictures though. 
Hmm. Dang, a bunch of like loose gravelly spots would be cool. 11's more than 10, though. Yeah, sure, sure. Then, But then why not 12? 12's more than 11, you know? Like, either you choose a nice round number or you go into infinity. No in between. There's also singing sand. Dirk Lover, I've never heard about this. This sounds so cool. It, that sounds like a thing that would be in, like, a fantasy game. Singing sand. Let's just go to an actual web search. So called whistling sand, barking sand, or singing dune. Sand that produces sound. Cool. What? Sand grains have to be round and between 0.1 and 0.5 millimeters in diameter. The sand has to contain silica. I'm going to be honest, I thought literally all sand contained silica. And like there are beaches where. You think it's sand, but actually it's a bunch of animal bones, a bunch of little tiny fish bones. And so then it's not actually sand, but maybe not. Maybe sand doesn't have to have silica. Sand needs to be at a certain humidity. Cool. OK, but do you have a re they have a recording? Hmm. Is that that's coming through? Yeah. So it's not that it sings on its own. It's that when you step on it, it makes a, it makes a noise. Cool. What a weird fucking noise. All right. That's fun. That would be a fun, uh, you just like, you could just add that in as like a fun sound effect somewhere. That's fucking cool. They also can resonate on the wind. That was what I initially was thinking. Was that like, you're going to hear weird like whistling noises as you're walking around a desert. Like when the dune travels. That shit's so cool. I love that like scientists couldn't figure that shit out for the longest fucking time. And uh, like large objects can be moved because of it. It's fucking trippy. Um, okay, so we should back up to uh, Rocky Beaches again. That was a fun tangent. Um, so yeah, like we have more control over the shape of the coast within realism, whatever. I'm already not making a super realistic coast. We could have cool like rocky areas. Maybe like some kind of cool creature lives in here. I don't know, like a snake. I feel like snakes would like rocky zones, maybe. So dunes can create resonant chambers by layering different size of marbles, like different sizes of sand grains. Is that actually a thing that happens? That sounds fucking cool. That sounds like some shit that if I was like an ancient human and I heard sand dunes making melodies, I would be like, the fuck it, there's a god. The gods exist. There's a god of sand and he's fucking fucking with me right now. Hmm. There's nothing else really cool I'm getting from this. I guess there's this really common situation here where like arts in the in the background are like sheer cliff. And then this spot is like a relatively steep, like you have some like big rocks, then just like flat sheet rock and then stuff growing. I don't know. I don't really think I could represent this, though, with the tools that I have. OK, that's a fantasy thing you were talking about. All right. OK. It's a cool idea. Mm, ooh, big ass rocks just right up on the water. So cool. Okay, here's a cool shot. This is interesting. You actually have like a typical gradual beach and then some rockiness. I feel I feel like having an area like that would be cool. I think we'll we'll figure that out next time. I'll make sure I have the uh the new tiles ready to go. 
so we can start designing stuff like this, especially the the shallow to deep water transition and the uh, the new corner pieces for the for the walls so we can do this shit. Sweet. Oh, like a cove, dude. Ooh, ooh, I would love to have a cove. Coves are so cool. Also, maybe some bottles on the beach like a pirate map. That's a very fun idea. Damn. Yeah, yeah, we got to do something like that. Maybe like a riddle, maybe just like a little a vague map. Stardew Valley has a bunch of little maps that you can find, and it's your job to figure out like where where the X is like on the actual game map. That's fucking cool. Oh, it's not a fantasy. It's like something from a fantasy, but it's real. Sure, yeah. I think that was why I was so quick to believe you were saying it was actually just fantastical because it sounds like nonsense. Whoa, are you just like, no, you're just a bunch of stones. Okay. Okay. I thought they were like melted together. Cool white sand beach. Hmm. There is a function I need to try and mess with. Um, you can like modulate a bunch of tiles at once and you can change like a, a shared color. Um, so we might be able to like do something like this for, for different future beaches. We might be able to make them differentiated. Oh, that's cool. Just a giant ass rock off in the distance. Maybe some jagged cliffs in the sand, like a long rock. Yeah, I think I think we want we want like a, a mix of a bunch of things like that. Like areas that have jagged cliffs, areas that have just just some rocky zones. Um and then what I'm really trying to think of is um I think I think maybe that's that's enough ideas for now. Um with like a a rocky structure, I feel like you could much more easily have like cool little like inlets where we can have like tide pools further in inland. Um, maybe just like interesting, interesting little like valleys with nooks and crannies to explore. Also, sandstone is porous. It is porous. But what do we do with that? How does that inform our map design? Are we going to, like, blow open some sandstone walls? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, man, destructibility. I want everything to be destructible. It's so fucking cool playing Elden Ring, and, like, I can't break gravestones, but then the boss is coming at me, and he swings his giant fucking hammer and breaks all the gravestones. Like, oh, it's so cool. Scaling destructibility. Certain things you can break. Certain things only big creatures can break. Ugh. Well, I have a rocky underwater cave with a geyser exit. Oh, exits, plural. That wasn't a plan, but that sounds fun. That sounds like a cooler version of ladders. Like a one, it's like a one way ladder. You like ride a geyser up to an area. That's pretty cool. Ooh. Okay, Dirk Dur Lever, remember that. We could have the, we could have the cove. I, I want to have a cove area, like a little a little cave we go into. We have uh, underwater caves. Now I don't I don't know about actually fully underwater. The um, there are a bunch of Pokemon assets for diving because dive is an ability. Um, but I don't know how I would do combat underwater. Like Sea of Stars does it. And it's just like, okay, it's just like a normal fight. But like, you couldn't, I don't know, you couldn't like wield a sword as effectively underwater. Like you'd be so slow. Like a, if, a, if you were fighting like a, like someone like Aquaman, they're used to it. They, they understand that shit. They're gonna, they're gonna run circles around you. I guess I could give you like weapon penalties. You could fight underwater, but then you have like a, a penalty if your strength isn't really, really high. And maybe for that reason, like magic is more useful underwater. I don't know. 
Maybe we could do it. That sounds like a an optional shoot for the stars kind of thing. I got distracted. Hell yeah, I did. That's because th that's the. It's like it's not just what I want to put it in, because that sounds really cool. Having like underwater caves you would explore. That sounds fucking cool. But then, to what extent do I add them in? Right? Like that 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 has to be a question that I immediately ask myself next. And then it's like, do we just do do no combat? They're just for exploration. Do we do combat? Tide cave sounds funnier. Like it's it's only available at a certain tide because then it's underwater otherwise. That would be interesting. It'd be funny to have you be in there and then the tide comes in and it's like, okay, well you got washed out because now there's just there's a roaring waves everywhere. Partially flooded as the tide cycle changes. Yeah, I, I really want to do stuff like that. Um, it seems hard, though. You're essentially designing two versions of multiple maps. But it would be cool, though. Um, okay, so I think this will be a good place to stop. And next week, I'll make sure I have the right tiles ready so we can start, uh, we can start designing this. I want to, I want to make sure this area looks good. The, the transition from mountain to water and also mountain to rocky beach definitely could use some work and I'll make sure I have those other tiles built so we can, uh, can do what we're going to do to make this beach look nice. Ooh, have a rare resource or like a rare dungeon in the lower water. Yeah, I definitely want uh, I want things like that, especially like um, lot, lots of people hate water dungeons in uh, in games like Zelda, but I, I kind of like them. And I, I like the idea of being able to control water levels by uh, pulling levers or moving things to redirect water. It would be cool to have a place you could only get to if you took all the water out of an area. And maybe there's that's the only incentive to do it. So if you're not paying close attention, you won't realize like, oh, damn. Yeah, I didn't see what was at the very bottom of that cave area because I didn't think to take all the water out of it. And but but then if you do, maybe a sweet item and a sweet like little little challenge dungeon or something. Make the water interactive, not just a flavor. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people dislike that, though. Everybody hates the fucking the water dungeons in Zelda. And I I hate them, but I also do really enjoy them. The way they make you think is interesting. Navigating them and dealing with them can be annoying because you're really slow in water. And that's kind of a pain in the butt, especially in Ocarina of Time, because it's not a uh, you can't just swim. It's not like a modern game where you can just swim. But yeah, I know that's that's shit to think about. We'll We'll get there. We'll get there. It'll take a while, but we'll get there. Thanks for the stream. I should rest. Yeah, I actually was talking to Crazy Pants this morning, and I was like, I'm going to fucking take a nap. <laughs> Thank you for the, the good luck wish on the nap. Um, so I think next week, I'll make sure I have the tiles done. We'll probably play some Tometsi next week. I think at this point, I'm just going to jump around all the bonus levels of Tometsi when, uh, when I feel like playing it, because some of the levels have been just fucking mean. They've been mean, and I hate it. Uh, let's let's save. You, you want to save for me? Thank you, buddy. All right. So yeah, I'll be I'll be back tomorrow playing Elden Ring, and we'll be back with this next week. Hopefully, we can uh, we can start making some more progress. It's gonna be slow. It's fine. Anyway, dear Glover, thank you for thanking me for the stream. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, also, anybody else lurking? Have a nice day. I'll see you around. <laughs>